Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Smart Cities. And thank you so much for, uh, for coming and being here this afternoon. How are we doing this afternoon? A lot of stuff, a lot of conversations, a lot of mayors, a lot of CTOs, a lot of infrastructure talk. Um, hope you're all doing, food truck, hope you all partook of the food trucks that we have here uh, this year. So let's see, you know, art has kind of an interesting, um, an interesting spot within cities. Um, I was just saying to, to Roddy that, you know, it's often um, sort of the poor stepchild in a way, really not at the forefront of every conversation in how to fix cities, how to design cities, um, how to think about the future of cities. And yet, um, we have someone here who has been um, thinking about and actually acting upon the importance of, of art and technology combined in cities um, for, for quite so, some time, and most recently with, um, as the director of iBeam here in New York, in Brooklyn. Um, how many of you have, um, have heard of iBeam? And how many of you have been there? Yeah, so we've got a few. Um, so, so that's great. So first I'm going to, um, to let uh, Roddy speak a little bit and, and tell us a little bit about what, uh, what iBeam is and does. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Dawn, and, and thank you, Smart Cities, for having iBeam here today. It's, it's really a pleasure to get to share what the organization does and also to share some of the learning that we've had around our relationship to cities at large. And um, so it's a, it's, a, it's a really nice opportunity. Um, iBeam ensures that artists are at the center of the design and invention of our shared future. And we do that through a very generous uh, support program through residencies and fellowships to launch visionary projects uh, by artists that are critically uh, engaged with um, technology. Um, and what we find is that by sort of breaking down those two barriers, suddenly we've broken down all sorts of barriers and we're no longer just talking about art and technology, we're talking about society, we're talking about cities, we're talking about uh, how cities connect, how people connect, and uh, putting artists, for us, we very strongly believe that putting artists at the very center of that conversation and not at the periphery, as you were suggesting, is not just a um, kind of, um, uh, what's the word, just it's not a only generous thing to do, it's actually a critically necessary thing to do in order to see around corners, to have uh, a more critical understanding of what um, technology's impact can be on all of us uh, as members of a larger culture, and um, in many cases to invent possibilities for the technology that simply would not uh, happen otherwise. I can list some examples. We've been around for 20 years. Yeah. Um, in the early days of Jonah Peretti working at iBeam, he yeah. uh, was having conversations with artists uh, that were in residency and fellowship at the organization around conceptual art and thinking about what these techniques that were being used in the art realm, how those might actually carry over into creating uh, media that uh, has uh, the kind of agency and the distribution of uh, what eventually became BuzzFeed. Right. Um, Aya Badir, in the early days of um, yep. the founder of Little Bits, the award-winning uh, startup, uh, considered herself an artist, even though she was an MIT-trained engineer, uh, came to iBeam, made art for several years, uh, suddenly got the idea of putting uh, electronics together in a way that doesn't require soldering, launched the first iteration of Little Bits at iBeam, um, and really was informed deeply by the process of thinking artistically about um, how these components could be used to create essentially objects and worlds that wouldn't exist otherwise, which yeah. is basically all that artists do. So I feel like uh, that sort of design thinking um, coupled with technology didn't really play a huge role in our um, in many city governments, local sure. and otherwise, um, until until sort of recently, mm -hmm. and I, I I feel like now, um, you know, we've got CTOs and CDOs just in New York City alone. Chief Digital Officer, Chief Technology, Chief Digital Officer came in the uh, later years of Michael Bloomberg's administration, and Chief Technology um, role came just uh, in De Blasio's time. 
Um, so, you know, tell me how you feel about that sort of thinking process and those kind of creatives, um, you know, really being within governments and using, using data in a certain way. Is it important? Um, is it gonna, are we going to get more of that? Should we have more of yeah. that? Yeah. I, I mean, I think it really, you know, I think, again, the, the, and kind of the big picture role of what artists do at, for society is they ask questions. And I think right. if there had been a, you know, artist uh, in an executive position um, uh, at Facebook uh, 10 years ago, then there, things might have played out a little differently. And I Interesting. think... Interesting. And, 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 and frankly, at iBeam, you know, we like to say that we kind of show what's going to happen three years in advance by... Uh, surfacing the work that our artists are doing, we had artists that were talking about things that are on today's front page papers about three years ago. Yeah. And uh, I can, you know, my, I think it's a safe bet that the people we're working with today are showing us things that we should be thinking about three years down the road. Right, right. And I think that the more cities can both support individual artists, but, but even more than that in some ways, creating the infrastructure necessary for art, arts to thrive, for artists to be supported, right. uh, whether it be the work of DCLA here in New York or uh, thinking a little more broadly uh, in, a more, in a more kind of visionary manner as in some cases I believe the Bloomberg administration did in terms of the role of arts within uh, cities. Um, there, th th that component is something that, I, in my opinion, is, is still to be leveraged. It re I have, it, it's something that still could play right. a larger role right. in, in, in both city planning, city government, city design, and. Um, and, and just asking the right questions simply. Right, right. Well, you know, I, I also feel that, um, you know, New York is such a culture, has always been really a cultural hub, right? Art has always been part of our city in particular and, and, and a really important part. The technology piece within that, yeah. um, much newer. And a place like iBeam, of course, even before you got you got there. I, I actually uh, briefly ran New York Tech Meetup out of iBeam, very briefly. Um, you know, because they were open-minded. You know, what does New York Tech Meetup have to do with a place like iBeam? Well, you know what, Amanda kind of got it and saw there were some, you know, uh, technology people, um, you know, who, who had, a, had a more of a design perspective like that. So, so that's super interesting. You know, how important is, um, is technology piece within cultural oh, yeah. institutions in general. Certainly at iBeam, it's prominent. Um, what about our other co uh, uh, cultural institutions? You know, we've got, seem to have digital departments in so many yeah. of our, in, of our longstanding, more traditional museums as well. Yeah, I hear you. I mean, I think that it's, I mean, I, I think we're at the cusp of a, of a, of a sea change of sorts. I think that, um, when I speak to museum leaders, they are understanding at least the, the beginning of some of the challenges they may face if they don't engage uh, technology in a more kind of meaningful way. And that's not just through museum technology, but now as internet culture is essentially the culture that we all live in, that divide will become even more prominent for those who don't sort of step up to that. Right. And um, I think at the end of the day, um, simply creating an environment, I, I think there's so much to museums that is, is so unique and so special uh, in terms of creating a space that you walk into and as soon as you enter you're in a, in a, in a, you're in a very directed space for the celebration of art in many ways. Well, so let's think about what um, artists need who are working in technology to be able right. to feel that they are presenting the way they're working the way that they want to. So that's what you guys have always addressed, sure. right? Always thought of it from the artist's perspective yeah. and, and, and give a platform and a space, a literal space, yeah. as well as a figurative one yeah. for them to create in. Yeah, I, I applaud you on that. And, and I think in terms of the, um, and I, maybe this is just from, from working at iBeam, uh, the technology component of what we do just feels so uh, a part of everything that we do. Sometimes yeah. I'm surprised when it's not more. <laughs> but I, but I, uh, I think that um, the, we're, we, this is a bit of a, a changing moment. I was at an event in Chicago last week um, and I saw the uh, presidents of the Ford Foundation, the Mozilla Foundation, right. the Open Societies Foundation, Foundations, uh, sit on, and the MacArthur Foundation, sit on stage and repeatedly say that their highest priorities as foundations right now 
is to center artists that are exploring the relationship between society and technology. And wow, I'm I, super happy to hear that was hap that conversation was happening. I, I was actually speechless um, yeah. I, to to hear that kind of affirmation from from uh, the foundation world of of that of the necessity and and, and simply the urgency uh, was. Something new to me. I had not heard that level of um, commitment. Yeah. At yeah. That, that. And um, and what place does education uh, do you think play within that, or or is, or is there a role? Absolutely. I mean, I think that essentially artists are educators in many ways. Naturally, um, I think that the STEM to STEAM conversion is a very healthy one. I think that there is a much larger role for the A to play in the STEM to STEAM relationship. Yeah. Um, I really, if there's anything that can help technology education become more digestible, I think it is through arts practice and through a very uh, uh, hands on, I mean, we've seen we've see success cases over and over again of students coming in being a bit overwhelmed by very complicated technological learning situations, as soon as they're actually making a creative project out of it, as soon as they're thinking of what the uh, artistic and creative and expression potential is of this technology, it, it's, uh, it's a game changer in the way that they learn. Right. And um, that's uh, a, a more resource intensive in many, in many cases, but right. at the same time. Well, there's also, to me, there's an inclusion factor too, right? So um, I grew up in New York, right near the Met. The Met is a wonderful institution, a very old, both you know, physically and sort of psychologically, um, institution that really, um, you know, on the Upper East Side, um, you know, for a long time, not not a particularly diverse uh, area of, of Manhattan. Um, you know how important is uh, our, our cultural, our, is the inclusion piece of cultural institutions? I feel like even a place like the Met has certainly expanded um, their vision from from early days, or certainly from when I was growing up. Um, you're on the other end of the spectrum, sure. right okay. in 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 uh, Bushwick, yeah. right there. But even when you were in Chelsea, yeah. um, really sort of open open to the broader community and, yeah. and trying to make a space for that. I think the, it's crucial to have an open space for people to bring their anxieties, their ambitions, their hopes, their dreams, their, their failures with technology for creation of a better future, for lack of a better word. Right. And, and I think that when that is most successful is when the space is um, as welcoming, as warm, as... Right. Um, hospitable, as engaging, as community-centered um, as it can be. What we found moving to Bushwick was that it was actually less important for us to have a extraordinarily sophisticated and expansive suite of cutting-edge tools. We made a very strategic decision that our biggest asset is our people um, and our 480 alumni that have come through the organization over the last 20 years. Um, our community of people with curiosity about their relationship to technology and how they could better understand that through the arts and to create a space that allows those ideas to flourish. I mean, essentially, as a small nonprofit, there's no reason that we should be competing with NYU for you know, the, the, the highest quality tools. Uh, let's partner with NYU so that they can, our, our artists can have access to those tools and let's instead focus on a space for ideas, a community hub, a um, space for practice and presentation, and think of ourselves as a kind of a, a citywide centrifuge for activity or a flywheel that we can then branch out into partnership for distribution of the work and uh, for engagement. Um, and we've been very happy with that. Yeah. Um, we've, yeah. it's been very, it's, it's, it's working for us to, to, yeah. to think more along those lines. And I, that's different than a museum and it's different than a traditional arts residency. Um, but it's crucial, um, to have a space like that where we have open doors and open door policy. Right. And we, for any of you who would like to join, who might be in New York, um, 
we have our uh, Welcome Wednesdays, every Wednesday. Uh, we call it Happy Hour I-Beam Style. Um, and it's a chance for our alumni to try out ideas, to get feedback, or just hang out and think about technology and think about the impact it's having and how arts play a role in better understanding that relationship. And um, you know, you might discover the next little bits. Or, That's or, right. Yeah, no, my, my friend uh, and partner, Isabel Draves, and I yeah. started um, New York uh, Creative Tech Week here in New York because also we found that um, a lot of the uh, companies and corporations actually want the creatives on their teams. So we need it in our governments, we need it in our big corporations, you know, we need it on boards, we need these other, curiosity is the word you use, um, you know, that, that's right, no one better than artists to ask the questions and pose questions that perhaps haven't even been, been thought about, um, yeah. Yeah. you know. Yeah. Absolutely, and, and, and I think a lot of that too is um, understanding, you know, I, I think of myself as an artist advocate. I think of iBeam as yeah. an arts advocacy organization in many we ways. We feel that and, way about yeah. Creative Tech Week as well, yes. Yeah, and, and, and really thinking about, well, yeah, and it's great, you know, that a company does an artist residency, um, wonderful. Um, at the same time, are we really thinking about what that relationship means for the long term, is it just giving an artist a cubicle to hang out with the engineers, or is it actively engaging with the artist in that realm so that there's a give and take, that there's a clear understanding what the relationship looks like um, and what the artist needs in order to uh, be able to fill that role and to communicate that relationship in a very clear way. And I think you know one of my concerns about you know I, I think sometimes it's easy to sort of parachute artists into those situations and. And, yeah. uh, and, and I think being very nuanced about what those relationships look like uh, and how they can grow uh, and, 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 be, and, and be documented and to, be, um, and to have a role and to have agency within you know, those right. situations. That's, I feel like that's kind of the next level in some ways um, that we're, you know, uh, some organizations fully understand and uh, some companies are you know, starting to understand perhaps. Well, we've got, um, you know, just here in this country, but certainly globally, we've got some um, issues, shall we say, that we have to deal with, whether it's uh, global warming uh, being one, as, as well as a whole host of, host of other things. Um, are artists the ones, are our cultural institutions the, th the places where the answers can be, should be, might be, will be? Yeah, I, I think... The answers are not all there. I think it's also easy to sometimes overstate the role of artists. Um, and I say that if, as an artist advocate, I do think just taking them seriously and, and thinking very clearly about the role they can play in exactly those big questions um, and, uh, and, and really thinking in a very nuanced way about what their point of view is and their role in examining these, these questions. And I think that will get us closer um, to where we all want to be. Um, I think that um, it's incredibly important to engage artists in those conversations. And, uh, it's, and again, it's not just out of you know, a sense of, of duty or something, it's out of um, good business sense, um, right. good, good design sense, good... Uh, yeah, the design sense you know, is key. Um, and, 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 uh, and, and, and for good profit profitability. It's, it's not, those things are not mutually exclusive. So what are we going to see um, at iBeam, or what should we look out for sure. yeah. uh, uh, for the future uh, with iBeam? Well, we just announced our May programs. Um, so we have a, uh, uh, actually on Monday, we're holding a day-long symposium around um, technology and how how we see in 2018. In co it's in collaboration with the International Center for Photography. It's going to be out in Bushwick at the Knockdown oh, cool. Center. Uh, a day-long series of talks around um, asking essentially the question of like, what does it mean to see as humans when machines can see themselves, and how Super are we thinking about that? Super interesting. Um, so that's that's all day Monday. Um, that evening, we'll have an after party. We love to have parties at iBeam. Uh, so uh, if you should come to the day-long event, please join us for the after party at iBeam nearby. Um, in February of next year, we're holding a major exhibition called Refiguring the Future that uh, oh, wonderful. Uh, brings forward voices that uh, have traditionally been marginalized, both in the art world and the technology world, and considering issues around uh, access, uh, accessibility, 
uh, technology. So you've got all, you're yeah. hitting all the points, you yeah. know? That's yeah. why it's, IBM it's, is amazing. Yeah. It's going to be, it's a, it's a big year. That's, that's <laughs> so awesome. Please, uh, please stay tuned. And, and it's, it's really a pleasure to get to share some of the work that we're doing yeah. Yeah. Um, with you and, and, and yeah, with you. Yeah, no, so I, I welcome you all to, uh, to look out for IBM and what it's got in the, uh, coming up in the future. And um, actually going on right now is Creative Tech Week. Yeah. Um, we've got a VR party tonight and, and a crypto creative uh, panel uh, tomorrow and a conference on Friday. Um, so, you know, there's a lot happening in New York uh, around the intersection of, of technology and, and art. And so um, please, uh, you know, help me in thanking uh, Roderick Schrock, director of iBeam. Thank you, Don.